So one one ngay NFT, and ako tay mai tine matanga toy tine ringa rehe, ah tine karoro inu tay, ah otira Mr G, ah kito to hito tato fare no dere mihi na kia koe te tuaka na te na koe. Ah te na koe o ah mihi na kia koe te ranga tira mo o au ah mahi kato ah kito to hito na ya wahi ah tine tine ya o ah NFTs blockchain. Yeah, um, yeah, bro. Oh, well, I don't think you really need any introduction, my bro. I think everyone who's here will know about you, about your artist journey. But you know, a few things to to name. Um, I have to mihi to you, my bro, for this uh, beautiful piece of toy, your Aotearoa sign. It's it's sitting behind me, bro. Just so blown away, and just I was can't believe it. <laughs> just so stoked. So thank you, bro. Grateful. Um, listen, bro, my wife and I, we we really <laughs> stoked, bro. You know, you've you've done so much work in the space, bro. So just appropriate yeah. and putting that it actually went to you. So good on you, bro. <laughs> sure, bro. I had a couple of my mates going, oh, was that was that a was that a planned one or was it? And I was like, nah, but you could see <laughs> on his face, he was surprised. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Not at all, was... not at all. Yeah. yeah, mean, bro. But um, you know, you've you've done all all sorts of different mahi toye eh? from like spray paint, graffiti to fine art to sculpture, like carving for Cairo and and learning from from some of our best as well in that um sphere. Our, our mates Toddy and them, Absolutely. and like, can you talk to us about your art journey before we dive into the blockchain stuff? Tell us about your art journey, bro, because one of the awesome things that they find out. Our bro, uh, Mr. G, is a full-time artist and has actually been living off his art. So that that fakaro of a starving artist, which I really want to kick to the curb and really, you know, get it out there, get it out of our headspace. We don't have to be starving artists. We can live and thrive off our art. So, bro, I just want to hand it over to you and just, yeah, tell us your story, bro. Timata tēnei here. here. Oh, tōtahi, bro. Um, yeah, nei rata mi harua kia koutou. Uh, Koe au, uh, ko mau au pūtawa ki ngā maunga, uh, taki timi mā tātua ngā waka, ngā te rangi, ngā te rangi nui, ngā te awa, uh, te rarawa, uh, ōku iwi. Uh, uh, te, uh, te patua ai, uh, me ngā te tawaiti uh, ōku hapū, uh, he kararoa hau o ngā kararo inu tai, uh, nō te mautere o mō titi. Uh, Kere ama hoi te ara Mr. G tōku ingoa, nō reira tēnā tātou. Kia ora everybody. Um, yeah, so... I'm not going to labor too long on this. Um, well, firstly, I, I just want to honor and acknowledge uh, all the other kai or that have actually gone before me because, uh, you know, the the kōrero and value that they've been giving us freely from their own experience and stuff has been huge. So, uh, you know, um, yeah, just wanted to acknowledge all the, the kai kōrero and speakers uh, that have already... Um, spoken on this platform. Um, yes, so I just want to give a mihia to all those who have supported me in my artist journey, um, you know, throughout throughout the years. Uh, my Uncle Mita um, was one of my first inspirations with Whakairo. Um, my rat, my um, art teacher in Kauru College, Mr. Radledge, uh, again, he was a key catalyst in terms of getting this Māori boy that lived in Kauru to believe in myself as an artist that I could actually become a great artist one day, you know. Um, my goal is not to be a great artist. My my goal is really just to love and enjoy what I do, you know, and stay in that, that space. I also want to acknowledge um, my good bro, Todd Cooper, you know, who's a oh, master Jedi, you know, when it comes to Whakairo. And, yeah. um, you know, uh, Fane Robinson as well. He's had a lot of input into my life. And, you know, uh, Ray Hanna, you know, I just want to acknowledge these guys too, these ones that have uh, invested their, their time, their mātauranga, um, and it's a privilege to be in those spaces. Um, and I have, you know, Charles Williams, Fat One, and TMD crew in terms of the graffiti scene. Um, you know, I've, I've many people, this is a whole list really, but I just wanted to make sure that, you know, um, just in terms of honour, honouring those who have invested so and seed into my life and contributed to where I am today, so... That's massive, um, bro. That's massive. And then just before you dive in, bro, that's that's something that I do want to grab onto. And 
you know, like all the people that influence on us in our lives, eh, that's that's who shapes how we are and 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 what we create. So, like, if you didn't have that art teacher back then, or if, if certain people didn't come into your lives, eh, then you know things wouldn't happen the the way that they have. Yeah, oh, it's a hundred percent, bro. You know, and I think, um, yeah, I'm I'm all about just making sure we do honor. You know, and it's it's yeah, not mate. hard. You know, it's important that we do that to show our appreciation um, in, in whatever way we can. You know, there's my older brother who was probably the first catalyst in terms of getting me into drawing and art when I was yeah. four years old, you know, in Kauru, you know, just on the kitchen table, seeing him do a drawing of Conan the Barbarian, you know, mm. on a piece of paper. and muscly guy for pictures. Yeah. Oh, bro, you know, and for this little Kauru boy, you know, just... <clears throat> Those moments of inspiration were key eight trigger moments for me, you know, called Katerama, the light yeah. switch just bang. And uh, you know, and so with that in hindsight, I, I also understand that whenever I'm painting with Rangatahi, I'm creating those trigger moments for them, you know, for future yeah, artists. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. But all of us say, bro, you know, and yeah. in terms of when we do what we do. Um, but also not in terms of the flashy aesthetic, but the way we do it to a bro. Yeah. You know, that's just as important um, in terms of our intentions and process and all that. So, um, mm. yeah, so bro. All right, let's dive in. So, so how, how did this all begin? Uh, yeah, so um, brought up in Kauru. My, my father uh, was also one of my main inspirations. Um, you know, my older brother, you know, again, another inspiration. I think being brought up in Kauru too for the first 15 years of my life, um, drawing was quite a popular thing. You know, we used to do have drawing competitions with some of my mates, um, Tafo Pito from uh, Ruatoki and, um, you know, uh, Curtis Reed and all these names that, you know, we all know each other, but we used to, I guess, kind of be the good draws back in the day. And yeah. um, so it kind of fostered this, this, um, hunger for, for for art in general and and so I progressed to Kauru College and my art teacher there, you know, um who well, I always kinda of mention every now and then, but you know, he was a grumpy fellow, you know, sort of <laughs> the thing was um you knew when and this is one thing I admire about him that he kind of taught me about just being Puno, you know, um doing it respectfully too. But the thing is he was grumpy a lot of the time, but when he said something positive, you knew it was true and real. And um, it wasn't flattery or any anything like that. You knew it, he meant it. And, yeah, it uh, wasn't something empty or... Yeah. yeah, bro. And so one day he actually said to me after class, he Graham Hoiti, you know, you have the potential to be a, a great artist one day. Mm -hmm. yeah, and when he said that, bro, I went whoosh, because I knew he was being honest. And so, yeah, um, yeah so that, you know, he, he's passed away now, bro. And, I, you know, I gave a mihi to him on my Facebook page back in the day, but... um. Yeah, yeah. So, so he was a, a another primary influence back in my uh, back in those times. Um, progressed. I got into uh, Muay Thai and volleyball, you know, uh, and I kind of deviated from art a bit. Yeah. Um, but I injured my back, and then I this was maybe uh, 1998, um, I think, and and then that actually got me back into wanting to get back into art. I picked up a pencil again and. Then started having a tattoo with, um, you know, um, computers. Had a bought me a flash laptop back mm. in the back in the day. Yeah. Used to, um, well, back when my wife and I first got married, I used to um, work at a, a plywood factory. You know, um, oh, it was it was a hard job. Me, you know, physically just just um, layers of plywood. You know, um, yeah, it was a bit of a technique to it. But every our lunch times were only twenty minutes, so I get my yeah. laptop out you know and just have a little little creative session um and i was just doing that for about a year um but anyway from there progress to um i got my first while I, actually while i was at that job i was just teaching myself how to do graphic design like tutoring with uh on youtube you know how to use photoshop and indesign illustrator all that just all self-talk bro and, the university uh, of youtube eh, my bro hi <laughs> And uh, so from there, I actually, um, you know, got to a point where I started developing a bit of a portfolio um, and I ended up securing uh, my first graphic design job bro, with uh, Sun Media. Um, and I take my hat off 
to my boss there, Claire Rogers, because she gave me an opportunity and believed in me, even though I don't have, didn't have uh, formal qualifications. But she yeah. purely went off uh, the, the portfolio of my work, and she gave me that chance, bro. And I, you know, I really thank her today too for the the positive, you know, investment she's made. Um, and so I was a graphic designer there for about seven years, you know, and um, I loved it, man. And I learned a lot about graphic design, uh, the industry of design and branding and all that sort of stuff. And I think that's when I started to really weave a lot of the, I guess, some of the business aspects of of, of being a full time artist. Because um, what happened from there was. I, I started to get all these business ideas, you know, um, through, uh, there's, there's a lot I could talk about, but one, one cool example was um, I started drawing on Chuck Taylor sneakers. This is a long time ago, very long time ago. Um, just drawing people's names, you know, graffiti style, just on Chuck Taylor's and all that. And, and Converse New Zealand got a hold of me and they were doing a, a, a nine page feature in um, Pavement Magazine. And that magazine went all around the world at the time. And yeah. um, this was kind of like my first opportunity that, you know, I was like, oh, far out, this is pretty cool. You know, we got a, you know, I think it was a thousand bucks worth of uh, chucks, you know. And <laughs> yeah, some free chucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so so that was your first kind of big brand or like big collab? Yeah, yeah. yeah, bro, yeah. It wasn't really a collab, but they, was, they yeah. what they done was, I, I, I don't know the word Converse on one of their sneakers. Long story short, um, Converse USA actually saw that, feature in pavement magazine they told the new zealand guys that hey they're looking at doing a possibly doing a, a international run with that shoe but it was um but there was between my shoe and another artist from la and that other alice the other artist was mr cartoon yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, he, yeah, yeah he <laughs> okay. was the one who has uh, you know the 50 cent tats uh, you know, even, yeah. most people yeah. know who he is he was one of my personal you know um guys i looked up to and stuff and not, not uh, bad to be up in the running with him, though, bro. Yeah, bro. Not well, bad. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> I'd only just started out. You know, I was still just kind of having a tattoo, really, not really. But from the, all these kind of key moments, bro, really, what they done was they really helped me believe in myself, bro, in terms of, yeah. you know, backing myself, my ability, um, not in a fuckahihi way, but in a way where just building confidence, really, you know, um, and so from there, it just progressed into, and I got to a point, bro, where I started doing all these different avenues of, of you know, expressions of creativity. So I've done a streetwear brand called Reps, you know, and had that in like yeah. 20 stores throughout the country. And, you know. I see you, know, you resharing some of that, eh? Some, yeah, some, yeah, some yeah, throwbacks. yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Hustling. I remember the first time taking my small range on a, on a rack, you know, into the, the store and it was Nevada and Bayfair back in the day and I was nervous as and all that and yeah but yeah. they said yes and then bang heaps of people in, in Tauranga and stuff were wearing it and it was really cool but it's just all these it's moments that really help you step out of yourself out of your comfort zone uh, yeah. to a point where you, you just grow an experience and and they just all these collective experiences of taking risks and all that they just help you make more, um, more calculated risks I guess that you know like even now, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid to give things a go, you know, because I understand the value now of of you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. You know, if you'll never know if something's going to work or not if you don't give it a go. So, yeah, yeah, one of my bros, he's got a he's got a mean fakatoki. The no is already here, my friend. The yes <laughs> is what makes the difference. And yeah, well, my bro. Brazilian bro, Igor, he, he gave me that one, and yeah, yeah it, it is like that, eh? So. If you don't ask, if you don't kind of reach out, if you don't give it a go, then the answer is automatically yeah. no, you know. Yeah, but yeah. if you give it a go, you know, if you ask someone for an opportunity, they may say yes. That'll change the game. Or if you give it a go and, and you crack it, that's yeah. a yes as well. Hey, bro. Aye, bro. Aye. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You know, there's heaps of key, I think, significant moments in my journey, bro, where I've, I've taken risks that have worked out really well and just, like, things have blown up exponentially sort of thing. But yeah. there have been other times where, you know, they've been, you know, like hard hit, hard hitting failures as well. But, you know, again, I really believe I've come to a point now where I see failure as a growing and stepping stone. The thing is, everyone yeah. says, you know, they quote all the flash quotes about failure and all that sort of thing. But it's not until you actually do that stuff, you know, and you really feel the mummy of some of that stuff. 
and, and it still sucks it. when it happens. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And grow through it. Um, yeah. Because I, I really believe that fear is a, is a biggie in terms of what inhibits and uh, limits uh, a lot of artists around the world is is fear. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, you know, if, if you actually had a look back at your, like, art career to this point, and I say to this point intentionally, it's only to this point. There's still all the rest of it coming. But, like, what were a few like highlights like moments that you were like it was either it was either um something that you did that you really loved like man this this is awesome or things that you were just like whoa i never thought i'd be doing this you know like stuff like the prince mural or you know like i'm sure some of those bigger things but i'm also sure that there's there's some small things like a, a one piece of art that you gave to a certain person that actually means like that means everything you know yeah 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 enough Totally, man. You know, I think you know. There's some really. Yep, the Prince one was a was a, a life moment game changer, I guess, uh, in terms yeah. of. And that was that whole thing was really organic, bro. Um, mm. I was living in Sydney, Australia at the time. I was genuinely gutted when he passed because um, my, my my myself and my older brother and sisters they always listened to Prince bro, so I was brought up on his music. Yeah. You know, and, I play bass too, and you know I understand the the creative genius that he was. Um, yeah. You know what it took to yeah 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 bro. So so I painted a tribute portrait in Sydney, and then hello all the um, you know Prince lovers over in Chanhassen uh, in his hometown. We're just on my page, bro. Just going, Hundy, please come over, please come over. Come, and go, go. Oh well, yeah, okay then I will. Just boosted it over and. Um, Long story short, bro, like even before I got there, there was no wall secured or anything. So it was almost like a bit of a step out in faith, just taking a risk and see how it yeah. goes. So, you know, and, um, and bro, when I got there, everything just kind of fell into place. And it was a game changer, bro. It was, it was such a, you know, it was, um, you know, bro, while I was painting that mural, there were people coming up to me, giving me wads of cash, bro. And there were people crying, you know, and, and, just um, going down on their knees, just saying thank you so much for coming all this way to wow. of our, you know, you know, of the, you know, yeah. the. Hi, yeah. bro. Yeah, and so, and some of them were taking me out on their boat at Lake Minnetonka, bro, and you know, out for dinner and all that sort of thing. And I got yeah, spoiled, so. bro. I got loved on hard, Manaki hard over there, bro. And so, hmm. um, you know, and that mural became you know i managed to have a phone call with our prince's brother too bro and he just expressed his um you know gratitude on behalf of the whanau there as well um and yeah you know that mural became one of the top 10 landmarks of the state of minnesota now so it's um but all of that was organic bro i I didn't have any kind of ambition to go over there and paint a famous person so i can get exposure or all that you know so nah 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 and i think on this note bro and something that's important, I, I, I truly believe I could get a lot more followers, men, if I wanted to, and, and influence and all that. I'd just go over to America and paint famous people, bro, like a lot of yeah. artists do. Um, yeah. And they, they do that, and because the, the photorealism aesthetic has a wow factor to it, you know, sort of yeah. thing. But the reason why I don't, bro, is that that does not fill my narco, bro. You know, it's... Yeah. Uh, it's not what I'm about, you know. I, I'd rather do what I'm doing now. My wife and I, this two monarchal project is using our to intentionally target our small town communities because I brought up in Kauru, my wife in Tapuki, and and use the art to collaboratively fuck uh, Arawara, you know, and, and revive our our Maori history by reindigenizing our spaces, um, you, you know. This, you know, uh, suicide prevention, co-papa, and collab- working collaboratively with our rangatahi um, to, you know, fuck a kaha, you know, uh, orato to kiri tanga, bro. Yeah, yeah, bro. And that's and that's when you're doing things that really, yeah, they come from the heart. Eh? You're not just chasing the likes. You're not yeah, just chasing yeah, yeah. chasing the fame because you know, like a lot of us can and and would and do do that. You know, a lot of artists in that space do do that, but it's yeah. like you're really coming from your authenticity, you know, what, what you're trying to do. And I remember when I went to um, AIPA, um, they had a, um, 
artists advertising and illustrative photographers association so it was the first thing that i'd connected with other um photographers in the field because i didn't study or anything i was just a tutu but when i went to that um that conference me and erica sinclair she's another badass maori photographer oh um, yeah, yeah. We went, we went there, and then one of the things that one of the speakers, and I can't remember who it is, I really should have figured it out, but he, he said, show what you want to do. So if I want to be a wedding photographer on my Instagram, on my socials, I should show lots of wedding photos. If I want to be a car photographer, I should show lots of cars, you know, because that will attract, you know, what you put out is, is what you attract, what comes back. For me and my mahi, you know, I'm all about uplifting and te, te whakatairanga i to tātou ao Māori, to tātou ahurea Māori. So right. everything I put out is that. And that right. just keeps coming in and co- keeps coming in. So I can see what you do. You know, you're putting out what you're passionate about. And at this yep. time, it may be painting. At this time, it may be sculptural. At this yep. time, it may be whakairo. This yep. time, it's your tumanako thing. But when you're putting it out, bro, that's what's that's what's coming back in, eh? Yeah, I, I, oh, bro, you know, and I guess one thing also on, on that vein, bro, is um, one of the biggest game changers in my, or if not the biggest um, game changer for me as an artist, bro, and especially being a full time artist, was social media, bro. Um, yeah. One, it changed was a game, game eh? it changed the game. You know, it changed the game, man, and I'm, I'm, I'm telling everyone, you know, a lot of, I'm really trying to encourage artists to, to really um, just make the most of social media, you know, because I only say that from my own experience and, and to like yeah, 90% of my money comes through social media. <laughs> and just the thing is now that like these days I'm able to pick and choose my projects, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and for an artist to be able to do that is, is, um, is a game changer, you know, um, and I don't just get, uh, you know, inquiries from Aotearoa, you know, these are from all yeah, around all the, world. Over the world. Eh? I've got yeah. one pending over in the US at the moment just because of the COVID thing and all that. But um, one example I like to use was um, I done a, a um, was was a commission piece of, of Michael Jordan, you know, doing the soaring pose. And yeah. um, for a sneaker collector, um, he was the head of the Sneaker Heads Australia. Um, this was yeah. ages ago, bro, but... um. <laughs> So I done the painting in his office and stuff, and I shared that on my social media. Well, that night, bro, I got an email from Dennis Rodman's manager, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no, man. Hey, I wake my wife up, bro. Hun, hun. <laughs> so, and, uh, Dennis Rodman's manager, man. You know, and uh, I was cracking up, bro. And uh, long story short, he was doing a world tour, bro, and I got to do a live painting um, of him, you know, uh, while he was awesome. speaking. Awesome. While he was in Australia, and I got to yeah. meet him on stage too, bro, and got a photo with him and all that sort of stuff. But oh, man. That, that that was from one post on my social media, bro, you know, sort of thing. So, yeah, and that was halfway on the other side of the world. I had no, you know, control on how it got, you know, or influence on how it got, but just put it out to everybody, put it out there, yeah, bro, and, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an it's, extension, but I, I think the thing about social media, eh, it's such a connecting force. Now, we have to remember to have our real-life connections, you know. Oh, it's been all our time on social media, and that's something that I really like about the way you do your art, especially your murals, bro. You take the time to, you know, kōrero or mānanga with the community that come to see you. Yep, there's times you, you just need to focus on the <laughs> on the wall or whatever, but that it's a really um, interactive thing. And it's the same with me when I'm at a kaupapa. You know, I'm interacting with all the people. I'm connecting with everyone. And then later on, I'm sharing the photos of them. And they look awesome. And they look powerful. And they look beautiful. And they look strong. You know, like all of that sort of thing. Yeah. So it's it's continuing those connections. And then it also means that other people that aren't there, other people that, you know, I didn't get to see you when you were painting um, Fire Merata. I didn't yeah, get down yeah. there. But I got to see it through socials. And, and that yeah, sort of yeah, connected yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Just want to grab that... Um, this this question someone saying cuz can you tell us why you did the mando helmet <laughs> the the boba fit oh, oh the boba fit yeah so yeah that's so another that, that's another one that just came me eh? yeah 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 and the thing is very how that came as well so um what happened was i got an email from disney you know and uh, this was through my website 
And my wife told me, she's like, hun, hun, you need to read your emails. <laughs> like, oh, it doesn't need email. I was like, oh. <laughs> so I checked it out. And um, yeah, and my wife, I could tell, look on her face. She's like, you're going to love this one. Huh? <laughs> this is a good yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, they had requested to, um, to, to for me to carve, you know, with Lucas Films as well, you know, um, Lucas Film, to carve a, um, a Maori style Boba Fett helmet. And now yeah. Paul's there. Have they seen your your illustrations? Because I know you've been you've been sketching, you've been painting that helmet, and you know, our our, yeah, yeah. our Matua Boba, you know, you've yeah, been, yeah, yeah, you've been doing that for ages. Did they see that, and that's why they hit you up, or what was? The... Yeah, no. So how how they actually came across it was um, uh, the New Zealand rep for Disney um had actually seen the the gumboot that I had carved for I am Hope Charity. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I went that one. To the radio station. They must have done some kind of promo stuff there. She walked past the gumboot at their foyer and like, oh, who done that? Oh, that's, that's awesome. Cool. Uh, yeah, 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 sort of thing. And then she, from there, she had, you know, then approached me and because she had asked, oh, who's this Mr. G guy, blah, blah, blah. And so that's how, how that opportunity came about. So my thing is, it's important for me to know that people understand that side of it because... Yeah, the Boba Fett thing would not have happened if I didn't do the gumboot. Now, and the, the co-papa that was behind yeah, the gumboot. Hey, do you just want to share that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the co-papa behind the gumboot was to raise money for the I Am Hope charity, which I've I've done. I painted a Harley Davidson for Mike King as well. You know, um, for the I Am Hope charity as well, sort of thing. So. But the reason I'd done that was because, you know, of my, you know, seven years ago, I went through a suicidal point in my life. So that kaupapa yeah. is very real to me, you know, and so. And part again, of your healing as well, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or te mea nei, yeah, so that's the how that came about. Um, but with Boba Fett and stuff, like I've always had this, um, oh, well, love connection with Star Wars, you know, just because, you know, just me and everyone else really, you know, around the world sort of thing and just, uh, you know, um, in the last three weeks, I've had some awesome corridor with the head creative director of Lucasfilm. Um, and <laughs> some, <laughs> some good wānanga about yeah. some really cool stuff, yeah. Um, and just asking him a lot of questions, you know, even around IP stuff, all that yeah. sort of stuff too. And I asked him the questions because he's the right man to ask. Kia ora. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, I've got a lot of good cordial around all that sort of stuff too. Um, and the, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, nah, ka pai, bro. But hey, it, it, it does show that the things that you do when you, when you lay your tua papa, when you lay your foundation, and you might not know, like these are all seeds. Every every project yeah, that we bro. do, they're all seeds, and we don't know man, if I who are tona what. Um, conversations that you have with people. I know some of the opportunities that I've had have just come out of. I was sitting next to someone on an airplane, and then suddenly, boom! There's this you know long connection that I've had with them over the last three years doing mahi with them, or, or you know, um, yeah, yeah. connection with musicians because I was shooting at a gig and I just gave them the photos and said, "Yeah, bro, you look awesome. Here's here's some photos." You know, it's that those connections you don't know where they're gonna lead. Hi, right, bro. You know, and I, I think the key is just being pointed to yourself, eh, bro? And to your yeah. journey, and you know, yeah. like so. Hope and two Monaco is a very that's a you know that's a co-papa that's very real to my wife and I, bro. And um, you know, without mm. that, I wouldn't be here speaking to you today, bro. And so mm. my thing is I understand the mummy of depression, anxiety, going through a suicidal point. And, you know, I look back now and I'm actually grateful that I did go through it because that's the driver, a key driver, bro, for everything that we do because it, it brings purpose, bro, to what we do, yeah. you know, and that's important. You know, it's not just, you know, a lot of, a lot of life is fleeting. You know, we're only here for a short time, bro. You know, and I think the most important things are in terms of, my wife and I, we have a, a heart to to help broken people, bro, because we've been broken ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful, bro. And and that comes through in a lot of the mahi you do, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So shall we um shall we start diving into this blockchain blockchain world? So, you know, you're coming at this whole um kopapa from an artist point of view. 
so there's 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 different ways um that you know we can engage in the blockchain space and nfts you know it's this it's becoming this crazy and it is a bit of a crazy it is there is a lot of hype and stuff like that about certain projects pfps and stuff and i guess there's two different well no there's po there's multiple ways that we can use nfts um but the ones that people know about are all the you know the profile pick pfp profile picture um projects where you've got all the different um cool animals or symbols or whatever that you can use as your profile pics yeah. but what i really want to dive into you bro is um is is the art like coming yeah. in as an artist that's been doing this for the last 18 years you know you didn't start yesterday how did you hear about nfts and like how did you you know but what was your gateway into this yeah so i was inspired bro by watching this video of a guy called trevor jones well, Trevor Jones and this guy Beeple. So those of you watching, if you're looking at getting into NFTs and stuff, uh, as a, if, you're, if you're an artist and looking to get into NFTs, I'd highly encourage you to search up Trevor Jones on YouTube um, because it was his story that actually inspired me to get into NFTs um, because he shares his story. Um, and the, the thing I love about his story was that he... Um, he was brutally, he was just really honest in his story. You know, he talked about how he had been a full-time, he was an oil painter. And so yeah. he, he was doing commission paintings and he like, he spent years struggling to pay the rent, you know, and buy food and all that sort of stuff. Um, what happened, long story short, he done a painting, an oil painting of like a, I can't, I think it was like a, a marble um, sculpture of Madonna or something with a Bitcoin in the back. And um, it was a like an oil painting. It was a nice painting. Um, and he took a digital photo of this painting. And he'd done a run of 4,000, a numbered run, uh, like NFT run of 4,000 editions of that one one single painting. Um, and so each painting, or well, each, each NFT of that painting cost $700. Um, and he sold 4,000 of them. He sold all 4,000 of them uh, as okay. NFTs. Now... He made a lot of money there, you know, sort of thing. But the thing was, the game changer, this is one thing that really um, got me, I guess, intrigued and inspired by the whole NFT space and its value for artists was um, each one was each one of his NFTs sold for, I think it was $777, say so $700. Um, now, they're, I think they're worth about 8 to 10K to try and yeah. purchase one of them. So they had been flipped now resold, uh, I don't know how many times, you know, so many times, but every single transaction from all 4,000 of them, he got 10% of each transaction. And so yeah. he made a ridiculous amount of money, basically like a royalty check from, from just one painting. Um, and so the, the, the thing I love about his story too is that right now, um, he's wanting to celebrate with all his um, artist supporters or those who have bought his NFT art and stuff and he, he was actually um looking around in scotland for a castle for everyone to bring everyone over and just have a big party casual or, castle you know, party. <laughs> yeah, yeah just a casual look around in scotland for a castle yeah to to celebrate so um but you know in his video too it just showed how much of a, a life-changing um vehicle the whole nft space has been for him you know and he's got mm. his own apartment now and all that sort of thing but my, and that's not going to happen for every everyone, eh? No, but no, absolutely, bro. That's way, what I want to make clear too, is that, yeah, you know, and that's why I say that his story inspired me because he started from something, but he also, you know, to where he is now. But in saying that, that's the thing that actually made me consider and think, man, I might actually give this thing a go. But the thing that made me really want to get into NFTs was the fact that it honoured the creator of the artwork. You That's know, what I like about it too, bro. Honest creator, and um, you know, as we talk about, you know, talk about a lot in, in this space, um, how a lot of the time, you know, even artists in general, you know, uh, just you know, uh, you get all these um Sotheby's and all these other, you know, Christie's, um, you know, art auctions and all that sort of stuff, selling for millions of dollars. The artist doesn't, the original artist doesn't get zilch. You know, yeah, um, and they're going for millions of dollars, you know, sort of thing. But this, the NFT space, the blockchain, all that sort of stuff, it ensures and, and basically sets in stone 
that the artists will get, you know, royalties for forever. For Pareo kine. Kine in, one yeah. And when we were having our, our yarns with um with those other two tohunga, with, with um, <coughs> Todd and Roy, um, oh, yeah. about, oh, about yeah, Roy, yeah, 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 we were yeah, talking yeah. about like generational um, wealth, yeah. you know, because yeah. you know a, a lot yeah. of the time, and unfortunately, so it's after the artist has passed that the work really, you know, is is becomes more and more valuable um, oh. because of the scarcity, and oh. you know, in the current current art market, um, you know, their kids wouldn't get anything. You know, their, yep. their parents probably made the sale, you know, back when they were younger. And yep. then now it's been flipped and flipped and flipped and flipped. And, you know, it's it's worth $100,000, but the kids or the mokopuna don't get anything. And what this can change is is that if their, their parent, if the artist has passed down their keys yep. um, to their mokopuna, then those ro- royalties will keep coming in. Yeah. And that's, that's something that hasn't right. happened in the art world, eh, bro? Oh, bro, like, in one example, bro, the, <clears throat> so going from the Trevor Jones inspiration sort of thing, you know, um, my wife and I thought, hun, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a dabble, you know, we'll see how it goes and stuff, you know, sort of thing. Why nice not dabble, nothing, bro. <laughs> nothing, nothing games sort of thing. And yeah. so, you know, we wanted to do it with excellence, bro, and just, you know, um, do it with authenticity, be remaining puno to who we are and all that sort of stuff, you know, but... You know, um, like we made a hundred k on our first drop, sort of thing, and on the following Tuesday we got our first, you know, um, secondary Royal sales royalties yeah. check of ten k. You know, which which you know may not be a lot to some, but you know, it's uh, for me it was the principle proving that hey, this thing actually works and is real. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's real we, and yeah, and that's only your first that, royalties check. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when we transferred that into our, you know, accounting stuff, it's just like, this is real. So we don't need, you know, you've got all these naysayers out there saying, oh, no, NFTs is all caca and, you know, it's, it's all just or... very airy fairy, uh, you know, um, monopoly money <laughs> that yeah. you can't realize in the real world. It's like, air yeah, cop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. so, yeah, so now we kind of really just, um, you know, just, Still, just um, going to the next step, to the next step. Not being overly, um, you know. I, I think it's important not to be too, um, I don't know, uh, in terms of delusions of grandeur. You know, straight off the bat, just start small. Yeah. Just start. Yeah. Just be practical. Start small and just chip away. Give it a good go. You know, and again, you can reassess after your first um, drop and stuff, but. You know, again, and I'll always say it, just my main thing is just be pointed to who you are and your journey, your story, and your art style. Yeah, and, you know, that that's the only way we'll shine in this world, man, is when yeah. we just be ourselves. Yeah. No, you're trying to be someone else. And that, that kind of goes back to what we were saying before about, you know, chasing the likes, chasing yeah. the, you know, chasing that sort of thing. You could be caught in the trap of chasing. So if this is the, the latest thing that you're seeing out there, then everyone else is kind of copying it, and it's yeah. kind of like when the when the board ape um, yacht club came out. Suddenly, we had lazy lions and um, like yeah. Yeah. funny fantails, and you know whatever. We had a whole lot of things that were just copying it because that was the thing that was successful at the time. And yeah, so, yeah, what yeah. I really hear in your quarter or bow is that you know staying yeah. true to who you are as an artist, um, and you know you know creating from that space. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and and that is, oh, that is a really important um, thing to not not get caught up in that hype, eh? But yeah, actually creating because yeah, yeah. you want to create. Yeah, 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 like it's. I think another there's a temptation to, um, and I know we touched on this a wee bit um, with the bros was um, sometimes in this three D space and you know digital space we feel that we have to try and you know, digitize or digify our art, you know, to to say that it will appeal to everyone in the NFT space, the digital space and all that sort of thing. Um, you know, I definitely think there's amazing and exciting potential to explore that, all of that, man. And like I am too, you know, and I'm, I'm loving it. I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, because you know, it is. Like, it's a whole nother, yeah. um, whole nother format to play with. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'm 100% for that. Um, but at the same time, um, just encouraging artists don't feel as though you have to do that 
in order for your art to be successful in the space too. Like what I mean is don't compromise the, the integrity of your art and style of art just to feel as though, or try and make it appeal to, to everyone in the NFT space, you know, like for example, I've had quite a few people who I know purchase uh, PFP style project NFTs. They've, they've asked me, oh, you know, like, um, oh, why do you do numbered runs, you know, sort of thing? Well, where's all your one of one sort of thing, you know? Or you know, does yours come with utilities? Where are all your utilities and stuff? And and so for me, what I'd say, what I say to them is, you know, it, for me, it's kind of like going to Leonardo da Vinci and, and he's holding his Mona Lisa painting or NFT of it, you know, he said, oh, hey, um, does your Mona Lisa, you know, come with any utilities or you know, anything else, you know? And uh, when he yeah. says no, well, you know, it's as if you're almost making them feel as though if it doesn't have utilities or doesn't have, you know, all this other other side perks to it, that it's of no worth or value, which is totally wrong, man. you know, when it comes to art, yeah. because people want to buy the Mona Lisa because it's the Mona Lisa painted by Leonardo da Vinci, you know, yeah. uh, and I, I think this is uh, another space that we really need to really just um, plant some some po whenua in the ground in, in, in this space regarding yeah. the, the distinctions just between respectfully between um you know pfp projects and all that sort of stuff and the world of art and and art in general just to preserve the integrity of art you know because i've also seen you know people who aren't artists all, all of a sudden see this whole thing of nft suddenly become artists you know and yeah. try and produce, you know, art out of, you know, from those blooming, you know, um, PFP generator, you know, Generators, random like, yeah. apps, you know, and and the and the worst thing is they'll get influencers to say, yes, this is awesome art, you know, and and it just suddenly becomes, everyone's on it, and then everyone problem. loses money, or yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that's a that's a real, you know, like because the space does have massive potential for earning, like it, yeah. it really does, it has massive massive potential for for putia. But what yep. that also does is it attracts a whole lot of people who aren't actually here for the art. They're yeah, just here yeah. for the money. Yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, like, you know, what I really respect about some of those PFP um, projects is, um, so PFP just for the fun, profile pictures. So they're the things like the Board Ape Yacht Clubs or the Crypto Punks. Those are some of the most famous ones here in Aotearoa. We've got the Beavers. Uh, eager beavers really want to meet to those kopapa but these yep. are these are kopapa we get a whole lot of different art pieces dot you know similar characters but with different attributes um and you know they really have the ability to build a, a community um they can have a purpose for their community like eager beavers is a real good example yep. theirs is about um like the community is built around um music and around supporting musicians in in their community you know the money raised by those eager beavers, they're going to be giving ten thousand dollars to two different schools um, worth of music, uh, musical instruments. They're going to be mentoring up and coming artists and things like that that are really cool. And that's those are things that generally, you know, if you can do them in PFP. But making the distinction, the art NFTs that are art like Mr. G's art, like my Fakahu, are their art NFTs, and I might have utility with some of them, yeah. like. Some of my NFTs, when you buy them, you might get an hour photo shoot with me or yep. an hour lesson or something like that with me. And those are things that I can add value, but it's not its not to take away from the value of the art itself. And I think that's a yep. big thing that I really hear in what you're saying, Ebro. I bro, yep, yep. Ticker, bro. It's <laughs> like, uh, you know, the, the whole thing of, um, you know, I, I think, because there was a part, bro, where I was getting really put off eh, by what I was seeing, you know, in terms of... yeah. Um, and almost to a point where I felt I almost needed to protect my own artistic integrity, you know, because yeah. people were almost, I just felt like a lot of people were viewing my art through a PFP project lens. And, yeah, like and, how can I flip it and make some money off it rather than yeah, actually I um, love his art. And Yeah, <laughs> well, that, that's fine. The, the, the reality is, because the, the thing too about, about Putia and, and money as well sort of thing, I have no problem with people saying that they want to get into this for the money sort of yeah. thing. But just be straight up about it. Don't pretend that you're trying to be, you know, you got a heart for the community and all that sort of stuff. And hello, you know, you <laughs> said, 
my, the key question is, what are your intentions? You yeah. know, sort of thing um, with all that sort of stuff. But yeah, I just think if you're on it for the money, be straight up about it, you know, don't pretend or, you know, sort of thing. Um, and in saying that, you know, on this whole topic of money, um, you know, one of my foundations when it comes to navigating with money is um, the whole thing of, you know, um, there's, there's, there's that, my fa- one of my favorite verses in the Bible, it says, you know, um, the love of money is the root of all evil. That verse gets misquoted so many times and a lot of people say money is the root of all evil. That's wrong. Yeah, yeah. The I've heard that, yeah. Versus the love of money is the root of all evil. And so it's the intention behind it because the reality is, man, you can help a lot of our whanau with money. You can mobilize yeah. amazing kaupapa with money, life-saving kaupapa, you know. And so money is a good thing. can be... Hey, it keeps okay. your whanau fed, keeps your whanau oh, warm. You know, like those sorts of things. It's a really... Yeah, it's an important part, and and you know, I, to put it out there, like that's also why I got into NFTs. But that's not all. I, and it's and it's not profit first; it's co papa first. I bro. well, you know, and and my and my intention. That's where I'm coming from, and I know yeah. that's where you're coming right. from too. Yep, yep. And just again, it's that whole being puno thing, you know. Um, I've been having good talks and with different ones wanting to get into this NFT space too, and and just letting them know that just giving productive, well, constructive feedback in terms of this whole blind spots thing, bro, you know, like we all have yeah, blind bro. spots and we all need Audible. people that can, can um, you know, have, have the courage to actually have those uncomfortable discussions with us or say, oh, hang on, bro, I, I actually think you're, you know, um, a bit out there, bro, with, you know, you probably need to, you know, we need those people around us to just... Um, you know, because the thing is, we'll go down later on down the track and realize, oh, actually, the bro was right, you know, about, you know, the aspect of this project that I was doing or whatever, or co-papa. Even though it might have heard at the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you might yeah, have been yeah. going, ah, shut up, man. Don't tell me that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the reality is, we we all go through that, you know. Um, it's whether we're open to, um, you know, and it, oh, it's just one of those things. We, we need brothers, sisters around us that are, that'll call out or, you know, just um, highlight, I'm well, not highlight, just, um, you know, point out our blind spots, you know, for, yeah. for our own benefit, hey, bro, you know, sort yeah. of thing. No, so, absolutely. Yeah. No, that's um, wicked, bro. And so yeah. what have been some of the, like, the biggest lessons, um, and it could have been a lesson that came from a challenge or it could have been something that you did and went really, really well. Like, what are some of the biggest lessons that have come from you since you've, you know, started to dip your feet into the NFT world? Yeah, um, I think, you know, my wife, I take my hat off to my wife, man. You know, teamwork makes the dream work, man. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, uh, ara. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, she, man, she done an amazing job, man, of uh, setting up all the back-end technical side of things. Yeah. Where, man, she was watching like, you know, 50 videos a day, you know, and I remember getting migraines and all that. So just, oh, claro, yeah, this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, why all wouldn't you, bro? Yeah. <laughs> just dive yeah. in the deep pause, eh? And just, uh, you know, but the thing was, I saw her learn and just sponge everything in and just really develop an excitement for the learning as well. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, I, I just, I'm going to give a mahi to my wife, really, bro, because I saw her do a, a whole bunch of full-on mahi in terms of the back-end stuff, and that's where a lot of the learning was because even before the day of our first drop, we had there was, um, a potential technical issue that could have stuffed the whole thing up. <laughs> we were oh, like, oh, you're like, oh, trying to... What do we remember. do? What do we do? Um, Ruben Letty, and uh, he helped us, bro. He saved us, really, oh, you know? Oh, yeah, so, just being able to call on different ones, you know, with, with the expertise and picking and stuff, you know, in those key. Um, and, you know, ones like Richie um, yeah. Mills, he was a huge help, bro. So, and he has been like, you know, I, I really got to go prep there. Yeah. Because yeah. he's, he's set a foundation for a lot of us, especially Absolutely. Maori in this NFT space, Aotearoa. Yeah. So, if you guys haven't seen Richie Mills uh, yet, Richie likes JPEGs on um, yeah. on YouTube. Go and check him out. Um, yeah. Richie Tua Mills on Instagram. He's on Twitter as well. But um, 
this bro, he has been really open and he, and he really, um, you know, shared openly about, okay, yeah. here's why, here's how. Um, yeah, yeah. No, he's solid as, and I think he's watching. So props out yeah. to you, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, huge props to you, bro. And, you know, you know, me and Millie are really, really thankful. You know, there are times where you're ringing him like, bro, is it all good to uh, ring you now? And it was like, you know, almost. <laughs> I've done the right same thing. Midnight, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, bro. You know, and he's he's in bed, you know, kind of just turn the bedside light on and all that. But yeah, wow, he's he was solid, man. So nah, much yeah. love. Yeah, yeah. And, so, I, and uh, I think you know, in the in the grander scheme of things, like uh, I really do think when we look back in another five, ten years, we're going to be going, oh yeah, you're one of the Godfathers, uh, yeah, you know, here in Aotearoa. So hard, I want to say that now. <laughs> hard up, bro. Fully, hundred yeah. percent, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing, I, one thing about Richie too, bro, which I really found helpful and loved as I was entering into the space, was his um, videos were punal. <laughs> yeah, you know, bro. Um, they were unbiased. And so you knew he wasn't being kind of swayed or influenced by hype or all that sort of stuff. And he wasn't afraid to call things out as well, um, which yeah. was quite refreshing in terms of what I was you know, kind of seeing, you know, and observing in the whole NFT space because a lot of it was just, you know, just a lot of people just trying to pump and promote, you know, different projects. And I I'm kind of felt like, yeah. I kind of felt like when you go into a, a um a shopping mall and stuff and you have those sales reps come up to you and they're like, Oh hey, how's your day going? You know, they, they want to sell you something and you know you straight away you're like, oh, you don't give a stuff about my day. You just want to, you know, so <laughs> yeah, you just want to sell yeah, me something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, there was a lot of that. So to hear someone like Richie and his videos and all that just be honest was was hugely helpful. Yeah. And what that does it, it helps develop trust too. Um yeah. in, yeah, in that space, which is another biggie, you know. And that only comes through connection and authenticity, you know. Um yeah, so one yeah, other thing I, Millie just mentioned was um just take your time if you're going to be doing a, your first drop in stuff as well. You know, yeah, there are a couple of times, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we're like, oh, should we do it now? You know, and and they're like, oh, no, 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 do, do, do. you know, and we were still trying to navigate, like, even with the Discord thing, we were this close to, to starting one and all that. And everyone was asking, messaging, commenting, oh, please start a Discord, bro. You know, what's the Discord link? And, uh, and uh, I'm not downing Discords at all, you know, sort of thing, but. I just felt at the time we just couldn't do it because we were still trying the to capacity, learn. Yeah, bro. Yeah. yeah, bro. We were just our heads were blowing, man. Yeah, just you know, just um, well, exhausted, really. Yeah, <laughs> it's a yeah. lot of work. Yeah, and like yeah. I want to um just hook back to what you're saying, like about Richie, and you know, this is also my intention with this um series with the blockchain navigators is that. When I started learning about NFTs and, and crypto, um, you know, for that matter, all of the blockchain stuff, um, the only videos I could see on YouTube or the only way, places I could learn were all American or European or something like that. There was no yeah, voices yes. from Aotearoa. So, you know, this this is my learning journey, you know, and yeah. I'm just like, come on, let, let's, let's all go and learn together. And Build kind of like looking to my mates, looking to you, looking to Build Richie, it. looking Build to Chelsea, it. looking to, you know, Anonymous and all of our other mates who Build actually it. everyone's on their learning journeys. And if we all share together, you know, we've got that tuakana teina thing, which is distinctly so like that's something that I really enjoy about, you know, these yarns. We're all just learning together and you, you'll you'll come up with a lesson that, you know, that later on I'll think about, oh, remember when G said this or we remember when Richie said this. Yeah. Um, but hearing our voices, it's kind of like what we do in our art and what I do, especially in my photography, is, is reclaiming our story sovereignty. Like we're the yeah. ones who tell a story yeah. about Māori yeah. rather yeah. than Rawaho telling yeah. stories about Māori. Well, yeah. if, if we're wanting our people to like prosper and to yeah. really, you know, grow and thrive in this space, then, yeah. you know, why not be us, you know? Absolutely, Why not bro. us have the conversations? Love it, bro. Yeah, nah, bro. Mahi bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know, and we're going to make mistakes and, and, and yeah, learn yeah, from yeah. them and go, hey, don't do what I did. <laughs> All right, bro. Well, that's the thing, bro. The, my thing is, and the bro Riapo said this as well, you know, like, yeah. 
he, um, we had a corridor and he was saying, I'm so glad like there's other Māori out there. There's because there's not too many of us out there right now who are putting yeah. our necks out on the line publicly, you know, yeah. sort of thing. And that requires <laughs> yeah. courage, bro, that a lot of people are too scared to do that. So they rather wait for others to 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 step out first and see if they make it or not, or you know, and sort of uh, you know, and yeah. said, Oh man, so I, I fully take my hat off to to the likes of you and every single everyone else, bro, that has stepped out right now, you know, yeah. um, hats off to, and respect, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the reasons why I call it blockchain navigators, eh, is is to is that nod to our whakapapa as navigators. Of Aye, the and, up, and thinking of our tupuna, you know, they Aye. lived in their Hawaii, and then they went to the Aye. Hawaii Ho, you know. Aye. And as we th- moved through the Pacific, each place became a Hawaii. And Aye. the way that I look at our, you know, and Te Pairangi, um, one of my NFT Aye. collections that, Aye. that Aye. I'm here to you, bro. You bought the first of the Te Pairangi Aye. collection. Aye. Oh. But that's looking at the Pairangi, looking at the horizon, and knowing oh, oh, Kaitua Te Hawaii Ho, you know, like. That's that's our next Hawaii and and you know this Aye. blockchain space, metaverse, all of that. Yeah. Aye, ho, bro. I I I who are eh, bro? You know, same similar, you know. So yeah, no, nah, it's um yeah, no. Nah, I, I I guess you know, I I I I just have huge admiration, bro, for 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 all the bros, everyone that's just out there stepping out. You know, Ria Paul, yourself, you know, uh, Te Hau Nui, um, yeah. all those ones, even. Um, you know, Aroha Noa, you know, she, yeah, you know, yeah. um, she's just yeah, dropped her collection, you know, eh? Yeah, bro. Yes, you know, and so I, I really feel for artists, bro, because I know, and here's one thing, man, the, the most powerful way you can encourage an artist is to buy their work, you know, is to yeah, support full price. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's to buy their work <laughs> at full price, price if you can. Yeah. The, the encouragement, man, is huge, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I just think this whole thing, man, we, we need millionaires buying Māori art, you know, from Māori yeah. artists, you know, and yeah. not from institutions and all that. I mean, direct off the artists. <laughs> yeah, and this <laughs> is the way it can be done, eh? Aye, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Because for too long, bro, a lot of, um, you know, this whole thing of, you know, how we define, how people define, how the world defines art, you know, uh, and the value of R2, you know, is far up, bro. I've got heaps of... <laughs> that's <laughs> another, there's another yarn, that's another one. Yeah. 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 Uh, massive. So what yeah. what excites you about this space, bro? Like, I know there's the Putea side and then there's the access to a whole lot of people, you know, like, because this blockchain is, is worldwide. Um, but, yeah. like, what are the things... You were talking about, you know, trying out new things in the in the digital realm. Like I, I've seen you working your 3D models and your Procreate, and you know, I'm really excited to see what the next drop is. But like, what excites you, bro? Or like, what what sparks you up? Yeah, I, I tell you what, bro. The the number one thing that excites me about this space for artists is um is that what this does is, you know, artists can get paid well for what they truly love to create, bro. And what that does is that liberates artists, bro, to be in their sweet spot, you know. And so yeah. that's the dream of every artist to be able to create what they truly want, you know, not do commissions, what other people want them to create, but to create from the the, from the depths heart. of their heart, bro, you yeah, know, the bro. things that make their heart sing, you know, and to be able to create that. And, yeah. um, you know, and if they can provide a you know you know create a, a following and a demand for that in the nft space and stuff yeah. um you know just like that trevor jones guy you know I, I i use his example just as a point of inspiration what can be possible because i think what a lot of us do is that we we don't even have those inspiration references and so we don't even aim high bro we we, yeah. revert, we revert back to our own experience <clears throat> and so We'll never progress forward, bro, you know, and so we need those uh, inspirational references to help us just lift our, our eyes and, and believe in ourselves and, and just, just you know, I, I like to play his, um, his little video in my mind sometimes just to show it is possible. And yeah. for me, I don't, for me, I don't even cap it at what he done too, you know, I believe nah. we can't go further, you know, yeah. but it does prove that it is possible. 
And like with my first drop, that was a tick in the box for me saying, yep, this is real. Let's go. <laughs> Honey, let's yeah, yeah. go let's do this. And, you know, we can – the exciting thing is, bro, the perpetuity. One thing I went uh, I went there to check out um, was uh, they had the um, one of the biggest street art um, shows or ex- exhibitions there. And so they have a lot of the – well, the, the American big guns and some of the overseas big guns sort of thing and – so I just went to go and check it out. And, you know, amazing mahi and all that sort of stuff. Awesome kaupapa. Yeah. Um, my, my only thing was, you know, um, they had a lot of um, indigenous portraits there and stuff like that. But, you know, um, there was a, an artist there that I know one of them wasn't an indigenous, you know, he wasn't indigenous. And so you had all these portraits up there that were, you know, borrowing the indigenous aesthetic and all that sort of stuff. Um, but there was no honunga, bro, you know, yeah. and so for someone like myself who understands the, you know, the, yeah, the yeah. bro, all that, bro, and so um, I actually asked to see the curator <laughs> and I challenged them, bro, yeah, 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 yeah. and I said, oh, you know, just, oh, Mr. Maltiti here from, <laughs> <laughs> but I could see clear the as day, I could see clear as day the, the, well, the breach really in terms of indigenous integrity and stuff, in terms of indigenous storytelling, and I, what I, the thing was, I actually had a, um, that, at that particular time, I had my home exhibition at the Tauranga Art Gallery, and um, Uno Magazine had done a feature on my the portrait of my father, and that yeah, portrait but... of my father, that is all about Honunga and connection, my connection to to there to Motiti Island our stories, our tupuna whare, our whakapapa, the whole lot, it's all in that one piece. And yeah. so I was able to educate them because um, in their gallery, they had some real beautiful, you know, like photorealistic portraits and stuff. Um, but the thing is, I was able to like go through my father's portrait. I had to assert myself, not in a in an arrogant whakahihi way, but in a way of asserting the, the need for them to highlight the principle of, of of really supporting and creating more platforms for the real deal, the real McCoy of Indigenous yeah. artists telling their stories. Art. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, I showed them the portrait of my father and it's got the yellow part in the middle, which represents, you know, the, you know, our, our you know, yellow putakawa flower, which is, a, you know, he tohu nui nui kia mato, you know, mm. the, mm. on Motiti and then the carving, the carved frame. You know, for Cairo, you know, Te Ao for Cairo, you know, he had the, the reference of my Fari Tupuna, he had the Amo, you know, which had the Maramataka eyes, you know, he had the Pukinga down the bottom, which represents, you know, living on a Motere, you know, our our Tupuna and all that, how they how they survived on on you know, living off off the Moana and stuff too. So all of that is rich with story and connection and fucker eh? And yeah. so anyone can paint a, a realistic portrait. But do you have that connection behind all that stuff? That's where the real mana is, eh, bro? And yeah. so, and took it to bro, that the penny dropped for them. And I'm glad because it was an opportunity for me to just educate them, bro, you know? And, and yeah, I've done and kind it. of push their thinking as well, eh? It's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll be doing what they're used to doing. I bro. Yeah, without, yeah, yeah. without, and without having that, um, that whakaro Māori, they wouldn't, you know, you, you don't know what you don't know. So it's, I, it's props to you for, for bringing it to them because, you know, yeah, a lot yeah. of people wouldn't, would be a bit whakamatu or, you yeah, know, yeah, and, yeah. and the way that you raised it in that puno way, that's yeah, solid, bro. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, the thing is, bro, I, it was really for their sake too, you know, in yeah. terms of, um, you know, being able to represent, you know, authentic Indigenous art, bro, you know, mm. um, but also, I guess, yeah, so... There, there was, you know, that sort of things, which, which, you know, and I'm always coming across that as well in terms of, you know, no one can tell my story better than myself, bro, you know, yeah. sort of thing. So it's not the one when other artists try and tell my story or, you know, sort of thing, you know, it's... Yeah, well, it's the same head, same bro. with me for my work. I'm like, I, there's there's other Tewiwi Pākehā photographers that are better photographers than me. Like, yep. I, hands down, I know that, and and I love their work and stuff like that. But it's like, but who better to tell our stories, Te Wi Māori, than 
Dewi Māori, and um, that's that's why I love you know training up the young guns. Um, you know, Aye. having those wānanga with our rangatahi teaching them how Aye. to shoot and what story are you telling? You know, Beautiful you're not just work. taking a pretty picture, but like, what does yeah. it actually mean? And it's that deeper whakapapa, You know, you and I, like like you just explained with that portrait of your of your um, papa, I can take a photo of a, a queer sitting outside the fare tupuna on the maho, and there's not not just an old lady sitting on a stool. <laughs> you know <laughs> what that means to us that, that, you Aye. know we can go into oh she must be the the kaikaranga what does that mean oh she's the real for her whare, for her Aye. tupuna for her iwi oh yeah and she's probably holding it down for their whole hapu and oh she's probably a, a, a whare wānanga as well she's probably a repository of of knowledge and you know, all of those things and that po behind her that Beautiful. I've got over her shoulder intentionally I've put it over her shoulder oh, Ooh, that might be her tupuna you know, on, yep. all of that sort of stuff. So right, it's <laughs> tiruhanga Māori, and I think that's something that right. you know I really encourage our um, our people to to do and to you know like step into um, with our art is that we do bring something different. We do yep. bring a, a real depth, and to think about that, don't just do things to make a make a pretty picture, but yeah. you know w- what story are you really telling and why are you really doing it? I reckon yeah. that's. Yeah, that's exciting for us, bro, because it's it's depth, bro, and it's and oh. it's a depth that you know others, a lot of others don't have. Aye, bro. Oh, well, mm. aye, bro. And I, I think you know, bro. That's a quarter thing, Nakoe, bro. That's for me. That's like the essence, bro, of of, of our superpower as Maori artists. You know, um, is our connection to the stories we're telling, bro. We have, uh, you know, it's so unique and so special, and only we can tell it. You know, sort yeah. of thing like. And one example, bro, was when, um, like, when I presented the Boba Fett helmet to Timuera in Rotorua. And yeah, um, so how that was done, bro, was it was because Tim actually put the foot down and said, nah, we're going to do it this way. You know, he, he, tikanga, you know, sort of. And so, because um, he changed the run sheet, bro, because um, I think. Cheer, <laughs> Uncle. Yeah, oh, kia ora <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, nah, and I said, nah, me, Rowie. Um, but the thing was, like, the, the Disney guys afterwards, they said, man, this was so beautiful. You know, they were, like, a little bit teary and stuff. And I said, yeah, you know why it's beautiful? It's, and the thing is, this is so unique. Um, and the thing that makes it unique is we're the only ones as Māori that can do this in the world. You know, the they world. can't do it in America. You know, what well, we don't. Not saying we're better than anyone else or better than No, them, but, but we're unique. Unique, just like our, another this, iwi would do it in a I, unique way this is I, ours yeah 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 and so that's the the very special unique beautiful thing about our culture you know sort of thing and so um you know i've had some awesome opportunities in terms of educating like even with the star wars where um you know the creative yeah, right? creative director of lucas film he was asking me, I was able to educate him on some Māori kupu, you know, you know, whakairo, you know, whakairo, you know, mm. about the huhu grub boring its way through the wood. You know, that's the, mm. the whakapapa or tera kupu, you know, sort of thing. So mm. just being able to provide that backdrop to them and educate them. And then they came back to me in terms of wanting to know how I how to pronounce my last name correctly. So I was able to send them a, a little audio file with the video, uh, phonetic as well, sort of thing. So, you know, all that sort of stuff is um, we are teaching and educating the world, eh, bro, you know, in terms of our yeah. us, you know, um, in yeah, these bro. spaces. And, and that's what I love about the creative space too, you know, sort of, um, yeah, real powerful. Nah, it's massive, bro. And then also in the art that, you know, you're creating in the future, like I know you've got another drop coming, bro. Like, tell us about what's what are the kind of stories you don't have to you don't have to huda everything. You got the hanga kura huda, so just a bit of vocab kura huda. That's that's a um, kupu that we're using for alpha because kura like kura huna are the like the hidden gems, the hidden treasure, the hidden meaning, and huda is to uncover. So kura huda is what we're calling alpha. So use use that if you're using alpha. So what are, what are some of the kura huda for your for your next drop, my bro? Well, tapiri. Taku uh kete bro, that one that was beautiful. Yeah. Um yeah, so my, my next drop bro is really um you know the first one was having a bit of a dabble, you know, seeing if this thing is legit or 
or kaka, <laughs> you know, sort of thing. Um, but really, you know, now that my wife and I were like, nah, this is legit, you know, we can, and we can see, you know, huge potential to, you know, um, the thing that, that excites me with the second one, bro, is, is like, I can really start exploring, you know, and really start putting the accelerator foot down in terms of what yeah. I want to create. And so that's how I'd kind of um, explain my second drop, bro, is, is basically me taking things to the next level. One other thing, too, that I I, I really want to try and, well, the hope is with the second um, drop is to inspire other Māori artists to to get into the NFT space yeah. and see the value, to see the, the excitement, um, the, the opportunities that it can create for you. Um, and also uh, measures of financial freedom that it can bring to you too, because the reality is, as an artist, the only time we are truly free, you know, to create what we want to create is when we have no financial restrictions, we can spread our wings and soar, you know. Contextual yeah. through the kaupapa, but in the real world, when we have to pay bills and all that sort of stuff, a lot of artists um, are bound or, or struggle to really create and soar. You know, for me, I see artists as uh, like a toroa, like an yeah. albatross needing to spread their wings and truly soar to the heights, eh? you know, and I, I just think the NFT space is one of those things that could do that for some artists, you know, and so my challenge, my hope is that, or an, an encouragement is that I really believe that there are some Māori artists who are watching this that will happen for you. Yeah. You know, you've got to, you've got to jump Absolutely. in, you've got to dive in, you've got to do the mahi, but if you do and back yourself, if you do, that could definitely happen for you because uh, this this is a definitely a game changer, you know. And, um, yeah, so that would be my encouragement, you know. Um, with my second drop, I've got some skulls, you know. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've got Tell a whole bunch of, of the skulls there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I put up a bit of a post, you know, about <clears throat> you know, I've got some um, – I've created some, I was going to carve an actual, I'm going to, but probably not in time for the second drop, but carve a G skull. So probably back to 2009, I started painting skulls with the letter G in the eyes and stuff and just having a bit of a play and explore a tattoo as we do as um, artists. Um, and so I've got a, a pretty full on whakapapa backing up, you know, uh, you know, every two, three years of me, just this theme of, of G skulls. And yeah. so... Um, that's going to be in there, you know, I've got a lot of one of ones as well, not just, um, you know, but I'm not going to be doing like, you know, thousands or anything sort of thing. Some of my, my skulls might, I might only do 10 or 20 sort of thing. So, yeah. you know, um, but each collection might only be about 10 of this, 20 of that, 10 of this, but, um, I'll have a range. And the thing is too, with me, I, I do try to ensure that I have, in terms of my price points and stuff that I've art that's, you know, that'll cater for the high end, you know, market and stuff, but also art that's accessible for everyone. Yeah. And so yeah. that's why I kind of done the Aotearoa sign thing as well and put put on the line the actual, you know, um, the actual original too, you know, sort of thing, just so that everyone has an opportunity to be able to access, you know, not just people that got heaps of money or whatever. So, you know, um, that was a real biggie for me. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just see no one, but I can't afford it. Bro, you know, and, and to be honest with, with a lot of, when it comes to value of art and stuff, um, and tēnā koe for your question, um, I think what a lot of people, oh, there are a lot of people that do know this about me too, but in the 18 years as a full-time artist, I've done a lot of mahi for free. You know, yeah. a lot of mahi, me, you know, sort of thing. Um, for, you know, to the point where, you know, it was a major contributor to me burning out, you know, sort of thing. And so um, what that actually taught me was there is a time and a place to, you know, and it's all dependent on and contextual to the kaupapa, um, yeah, sort of yeah. thing. So the way I kind of roll now is I need to protect my high-end value in terms of some of my high-end art, you know, I need to protect the, the integrity of that. I need to preserve that, you know, um, because 
the reality, and this is another, this could be another whole rabbit hole we could go down in terms of value and how we value arts and stuff. Um, you know, because when I was living in Sydney, Australia, I had uh, my first manager at the time, actually. He was a Greek guy and, um, you know, he was, he actually um, approached me on my Facebook Messenger because um, when I'd done the Prince portrait, he was a huge Prince fan. He's got a Prince guitar, you know, and all that. But the thing with him is he actually had um, arranged a an actual um, soiree uh, for for Prince to actually do a, a one-hour soiree for um, the, the old sheiks in Dubai in a private yeah. room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he showed me the emails and stuff. He wasn't talking, you know, kaka or anything. Um, and so I knew this guy could teach me some stuff about my own valley as a because he was a, he ran his own talent talent agency and stuff. Mm. And so my time with him, he actually um, there was one gig he, he arranged for me. I, I made about twelve or thirteen k for doing a one hour, um, you know, present just a spray paint live demo. That'd and, be uh, cool, Lee. <laughs> A while ago, this was quite a long time ago, and um, you know, I was just like, Oh, fire it, you know. And and so, these guys like him, he really started, you know, it was those penny drop moments where I thought, No, I really need to um, listen to this fella because he's saying I'm worth this. Where my, my old experiences and my, my background are saying I'm only worth this, you know, sort of thing. So, allowing and really getting around people who can really, um, grow and elevate you to that next level of self-belief um, because the thing is when you believe in yourself you project that you know and through yeah. that you project that confidence um, but the thing is it's not just trying to portray confidence and all that sort of stuff I guess for me now it's, it's showing a, a life you know and whakapapa of of just passionately loving art loving visual storytelling uh, loving this adventurous journey of being a full-time artist and people mm. honoring that through what they pay for my work, you know, and yeah. so it's just that, that time and a place thing. So, and it's showing other, value for, for what you yeah. do, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And for all artists as well, you know, sort of thing. So, um, I know, I know one other thing too, in terms of affordability in the NFT space, I had one of my mentors, um, cause we were, looking at maybe doing the Aotearoa sign things for like maybe $100 or $200 just to try and make them accessible. But uh, there are a couple of our, our guys who are giving us feedback. They're saying, oh, the thing is, uh, if you're trying to, if people only have 100 bucks or whatever, and then they got to pay another, um, you know, 100 bucks say, gas. Or whatever gas or 100 bucks gas or whatever, it becomes unaffordable and all that sort of thing. And so the, no, the, the whole intent of, of wanting to try and make stuff affordable in the NFT space is definitely noble and doable. Um, and I'd encourage it with, with, with starts, you know, artists that are starting up sort of thing. But, um, you know, I, I think it, it can be a bit impractical in the NFT space too, purely because of the gas can do it on other platforms maybe, but, but, um, but yeah, I, I think sometimes too, we need to stop trying to think that, you know, Māori art is just cheap art, you know, and selling it for Kilda, cheap. Kilda. Because the reality Kilda. is, how are we ever going to rise from this, you know? Um, yeah. And one one other thing too I I use is when I went over to Miami and I seen, you know, the street artists and the portraits over there, you know, some of the portraits, you know, were, weren't that big um, in the gallery space, but they were, the prices were like 100k US sort of thing, you know, sort of stuff. And I was like, man, you know, I need to come back to Aotearoa, you know, and and, and really just, because um, I, I know, like, in terms of technical ability and, I guess, aesthetic, I can do just as well as those fellas there, you know, in terms of the technical side of it, but I have something yeah. more precious than that, man, and that's my connection to my culture, to my stories, you yeah, know. And Māori tanga. I, I bro, taki Māori tanga, and so, you know, why should I sell my stuff for cheaper? You know, um, mm. just to make people that are, you know, I guess, um, you know, uh, I don't know, have their own perceived uh, or perceptions on how much and all that sort of. So, you know, I've 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 done commission portraits for eighty k and all that sort of stuff, and murals for, you know, uh, uh, you know, more as well sort of thing. So, and that can rustle feathers, sort of thing. But I've come to this point in my life where, man, if I die tomorrow, you know, sort of thing. I know that I've, I've, 
the thing is, I try and assert my value, not just for my sake, but for all other artists, you know, Māori artists, yeah. street artists, because, yeah, we need artists and people just pushing those boundaries, going up and up and up, because we all benefit, me. Yeah. And, yeah, and for me, like, with, with my photography work, it's my properly paid jobs that allow me to do my kopapa jobs. Yeah, you know, right. like you, like you, you yeah. know, heaps of you yeah. fellas who would have seen me at a at a kopapa. There's heaps of kopapa that I do that I'm not getting paid anything. And in right. fact, I'm paying my petrol to get there. I'm paying my accommodation and and everything else. You know, I'm paying the paying for the privilege of sharing this kopapa and capturing this kopapa. But I can only do that if I'm getting valued properly at other at other other times. And that gives you the opportunity, eh, bro, to right. pick and choose. Okay, actually, this kopapa. Right is close to my heart and they right. don't have a budget. But right. actually, because I've been um, valued properly for my other mahi, that gives yeah. me the opportunity to give a massive koha. Um, and agree. that's something that I really love in my work and I've done for the last, I don't know, five, six years. I've I done agree. heaps of kaupapa for free because yeah. I started valuing myself. And b- before oh. I valued myself properly, you know, I was charging bugger all. But then you oh. you look around and you see what other people are charging and you go... Oh, hang on! I'm, you know, I'm providing just as much value as you, or more, you know. And then it's going, oh, oh shit! And also, like you said, bro, if if we're charging peanuts, then people are always going to expect Maori artists to do things for peanuts. Oh, bro, yep, hey. yep, absolutely, bro. One one example I I used to <clears throat> um, you know, on that note is um, I went to uh, Karitani, bro, uh, Pukitaraki Marae. Down Yo. south, down the uh, Waitati, and I done a um, painting of one of their tupuna. Um, it was a bro Wairaki, yeah, um, Taiapa, yeah, Taiapa, yeah, 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 yeah. And so, but there was another. There was a youth uh, rangatahi kopapa down there, and I actually got invited down there to go diving with the rangatahi. You know, as there, there was one of the um, get those kina this uh, big, bro. Ivory, yeah, well, <laughs> You know, it was a haora kaupapa, bro. You know, so whare tapa whae. And so they, what they were actually using, though, bro, was the, in terms of the taio, the tefeke model and stuff. Yeah. Uh, using the more on the eye, bro. Yeah, so it was beautiful kaupapa, bro. So while I was down there, um, I'd done a painting. I had some can, access to some paint down there, too. And um, so I'd done a painting of one of the um, rangatira, um, Hwani Machi. Yeah, and so, you know, my payment down there was, uh, you know, having a feed of fresh kina, you know, uh, tuangi, you know, sort of thing. Um, but also, um, the beautiful thing, bro, is um, Wairiki gave me um, his koro hone type, his um, v-chisel, bro. You know, is that so, the one we saw today, bro? Uh, yeah, so hone taipa, oh. and the thing was, he gave that because I had done that for the, the runaka, yeah, down there. So that, that painting is at the runaka down there. Um, so he gave that as a koha, um, for, for my mahi that I've done. And so those that know Hone Taiapa, for me, you know, that that's priceless, bro. You know, those sort yeah. of tāunga, um, that's like getting, you know, Yoda's lightsaber, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, so it's all those experiences that are so unique and precious to a bro, you know, that, are, that I, I, I truly, um, you know, just feel blessed, you know, to be able to do do those kind of um you know things and experience those kind of uh moments yeah and so like with with tonga like that bro like because yeah i've been really really fortunate actually i'm wearing got a mihi to to my bro to marangai and um oh. you know because i i said to them a, a little while ago i said oh. you know for for some mahi I don't want it to be about pute. I want it to be about a connection between me and you guys. And how about we just do a trade? And I actually, I really dig trades. I do trades with, yeah, with artists and stuff all the time. But it's like the the value of that chisel, the value of this taonga, like far outweighs what, you know, even a thousand dollars or, you know, two thousand dollars could have done. And I think that's a really, um, that's a really enriching thing, eh? It is, bro. And it comes those connections. Oh, bro. Yeah, it, it's so humbling, bro. And, um, you know, I, I just think, uh, I remember when I was cruising past Te Kaha, bro. And so sometimes I carry that chisel with me. And yeah, so, um, 
he carved two kaki marae, bro, and so I got a yep. photo with the chisel and the, the whare at the background, bro, and just, you know, Yoda. mihi, yeah. There's a beautiful whare too, eh? All right, bro, yeah, well, that was considered one of his main <clears throat> uh, masterpiece whare, eh, bro, you know, sort of thing, so, you know, it's, um, oh, you know, I, I just think, yeah, just, just beautiful, eh, bro, although, and, you know, I'm sure we both have amazing moments and stories and experiences we can share you know like that so mm. and i think that's that's also something you know to, to link it back into our nft co papa you yeah. know these pieces of art that you know where we're sharing over the blockchain and stuff like that yeah. i know like my my first my first pieces that i bought were to totoko our bro richie you know yeah. so i bought a couple of his maramataka maori um yeah, 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 yeah. photos and you know again it's the same sort of thing you know the the putea that i gave him he he told me was um, helping with his son's school fees, you know, so I knew it had direct totoko for him and and for his for his tama, um, yeah. but it also means that I've got this piece that connects me to him, Hariakine, you know, Aye, bro. and it's when you bought Aye. my piece and when I bought Aye. your piece and, and you know like these sorts of things, and I think you know long term when we look at what's going to happen with um, blockchain and NFTs and we're going to have all these things in our wallet, each of those different pieces of art will tell yeah. a story. You know, my beavers talk about my connection with Riapo and, and Tim and all of the crew in there, Kings. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. my my Maramataka Māori talks about the connection with Richie, my welcome to Aotearoa and yeah, this yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> Speak to my connection <laughs> with you. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, it's not just about the flex, nah, you know, nah. the, the flex as your profile picture, but it's actually those those kind of deeper stories. And that's what, you know, I know for, for our bro Te Kanapu, um, you yeah. know, he told me he bought that that Hello, piece of bro. mine, that, mm. that kaponga. He bought that as the yeah. beginning of his blockchain journey. You know, like, yeah. and that was the that was the symbol that symbolised that beginning of that yeah. blockchain journey. And that's actually why I did that first collection as kaponga, um, uh, because yeah. for me, that unfurling of the of the fern yeah. frond, and yeah. we all know it. You know, it's in yeah. all our designs and stuff. But for me, that's my first. You know, akuranga. That's my first foray into this nft world and yeah, yeah like i said I've, I've sold about eight pieces or something which isn't much in comparison to like what you've sold but for me i was like uh, mean that's big and that's it's taught me some things i've learned uh, um a whole lot from it and you know and i hope the people that buy those pieces you know really value it and know that yeah, that yeah, means yeah. it's a beginning you know yeah. I, i'm not going anywhere either yeah, you know? yeah, yeah and I, and I, hopefully those those kapunga will be the beginning that pairangi collection yeah. Like yep. it's a simple picture, it's a simplistic picture, but actually the story in it is massive, you know. Yeah, just bro. just like your your art pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that was the thing that resonated with me, bro. You know, and it's I think the whole thing of um, again we come back to why people buy art NFTs, and it's yeah. for me. I think a biggie that I want to make clear to is. Um, my hope is that people would buy my NFTs first and you know foremost because they love and appreciate my work and it resonates yeah. with them, you know, sort of thing. It's just like when someone wants something, like really wants that new toy or whatever sort of thing, they don't really care about any side perks or whatever sort of thing. They they want that thing, you know, sort of. Um, you know, it's it's in the it's, story that it tells them yeah, and what it means. Yeah, 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 yeah the meaning <clears throat> and all that sort of stuff like. I, I remember, um, like, even, like, my Kino on Toast painting. Oh, you know, that one, like, bro. <laughs> I, we talk about resonating. <laughs> Actually, I've got a love-hate relationship with that piece, bro. <laughs> every time I every time I see it and I don't have Kino with me, I hate it. <laughs> yeah. Well, when I, when I first painted that, bro, for my exhibition in the Toting Art Gallery, yeah. you know, um, some had a chuckle and saw it as a bit of a joke sort of thing, but but the uh, the theme of my show was home, bro. Yeah. And and what's more home what than that? Kino and toast, home, bro. Was when I was a kid, bro. You know, on Morty to Island, mum making me kino and toast for breakfast. Kia and ora. the thing is, that resonated. That resonates with a lot of lot of people throughout the Morty. You know, a lot of Maori, obviously, but definitely you know, resonated so, with me, my bro. I'll tell you that yeah, much. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> The funny thing was with that painting, when I took it to the framers, <laughs> they were kind of looking at it like, what is it? You know, sort of what thinking, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? 
um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, oh, man, you know, this is probably going to be the first um, Kinon Taste painting I've seen here. <laughs> but yeah, uh, again, I let's go back to that authenticity side of things, bro. You know, I'm just painting what I, you know, what resonates with me, what's put on to my journey. And, um, you know, I, I think that's where we can really find that unique magic that we have. Um, I was going to, yeah, but that's a, another corridor. But, you know, with that exhibition, I was going to you put set up a, um, uh, my mum and dad's, uh, our, our whanau kitchen table, our, our original kitchen table we had, um, you know, growing up as a Inside the gallery. Yeah. So, yeah, bro, yeah, so mums and, you know, knitting, um, you know, tablecloth and, you know, we've yeah. got, the, um, you know, the, the, the power mincer that we've always been using for years, bro, and all that sort of stuff. And mums preserved peaches, bro, and fijos. All those things are, are just simple, you know, items, but they have deep meaning, eh, bro, to a lot of people that can resonate with that. Real yeah. nostalgic, bro. And I think that's a lot of things about um, art and music, especially. They really I, evoke a lot of nostalgia. If if you see, like as soon as I saw that Ken on Toast, bro, that, you know, it hit the spot. And I know it would have hit the spot with so many Māori all over the country, all over the world. Our, our fun overseas would have been so moke moke when they saw that piece. <laughs> I can only imagine the DMs you you would have got. Ah, oh, bro, put, take that down. Or can you send it to me? Or can I have some Ken yeah. yeah, but you know that's that's the power of art. Eh? It, it yeah. evokes feelings. It evokes memories. Like when we see things or hear things that you know link to our childhood or link to um, a, a certain relationship or link to a time, a place. Yeah, um, yeah. that's the power of art, and and I guess that that's what I'm excited about with moving into this next, you know, space with the NFTs, and yeah, also yeah. knowing that like we're really early right now, and. Yeah, yeah. Even though, you know, when people talk about the utility of the art, right now, um, I can't do too much with my Welcome to Aotearoa NFT. Yep. I can look at it on my phone. I can look at it online. But that's right now, bro. I know yeah, yeah. it's coming, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, in the metaverse. You're going to look behind me, behind my avatar, which will be Maui. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're going to look yeah. behind me and you're going to see Welcome yeah. to Aotearoa, you know, on, yeah. on the wall inside my metaverse and as soon yeah. as we can start using that, you know, alongside the po yeah. that's, you know, yeah, over yeah. here from our bros or, yeah. you know, like we're really early at the fun now. So it's, yeah, it's also yeah, yeah. thinking about, okay, we can use these things in this space now, but there's yeah. already um, virtual galleries where you can, where you yeah, can yeah, go yeah. through and have a look, um, you know, at, yeah. at all these different NFTs and stuff. And yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. far away. Yeah. yeah. And I think a key thing to remember too, bro, is that, a lot of these NFT drops, like, you know, what we do and stuff, uh, like even numbered editions, yeah. people need to realize that these are one-offs, bro. So once yeah, they're done, one. that's it. And so yeah. it's an opportunity <laughs> for someone to secure uh, a moment in my lifetime where I produce yeah. that piece. They have an actual authentic piece of that. You know, and so forever. And it's verifiable of, and it has yeah, provenance, yeah, it has papa all, all that sort you. of stuff. Yeah. And so there are people out there that won't see value in that because they don't like it or whatever. And that's Paitera, that's all good. You know, and uh, my, I always say if you don't like my NFTs, don't buy them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sweet. <laughs> it is easy. <laughs> but uh, yeah. there, there are people that do. <clears throat> they, they, they love what I produce and stuff and they buy mm. them. And you know that's and uh, you know there's stuff the art pieces that I love you know and other people may not like them but I buy them because I I like them and I I, I love them and I want to purchase you know own that thing you know and um, that's another whole you know uh, another whole quarter or really but yeah yeah I think I should have been smart and bought two of the Welcome to Aotearoa so I can sell one and ten years <laughs> down the track when you're uber uber famous. Yeah. And then I can keep the other one forever because <laughs> this one, yeah. this one ain't going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's, you know, I, I just think, <clears throat> bro, it's, uh, you know, artists that inspire me, you know, um, ones like Banksy, obviously, you know, um, oh, man. Nicholas Galenin as well, you know, indigenous artists, you know, his other, you know, um, 
I've got other bros, you know, old, uh, you know, Tangaroa Birch, you know, and all that sort of Israel. I've yeah, seen so him in like, here. He's watching. He's watching. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, you know, and so, yeah, I, I just think what the NFT space can do for Māori right now is um, is very exciting, you know, and can be a game changer yeah. uh, in terms of, oh, I think creatively creating – uh, creating um, freedom, time freedom, you know, um, creating, um, well, even just in terms of new, exploring new mediums and digital spaces and opportunities, you know, even utilities, I'm really excited, you know, about the whole utility thing, because I was thinking like with the Kinna on Toast one, I could have done a ut- like a utility a collab with uh, Can Do Kinners or something, you know, where yeah, they yeah. show you Mr. GNFT, they can um, get a 50% discount or whatever, you know, sort of thing. So all yeah. those utilities that are that are real cool and fun and relevant. Um, but also, yeah. you know, there's heaps of other, you know, collab businesses that are, you know, I've got some really cool collabs as well. So I've, I've got to mention that some really cool collabs um, for my next drop as well and upcoming drops. So, and collabs are, are That's the fun, eh, bro? That's the gem. Fun, yeah. Bro. yeah, yeah, bro. They're magic, man, you know, and so I think, you know, all that sort of stuff, but other NFTs I'm doing too will be um, like the videos that I want to do of archival videos. So I'm going to have a collection, which is Mr. G Archives, of some significant moments in my journey. Um, yeah, could... yeah, like I signed the Prince Mural over in Chanhassen, you know, that moment, you know, sort of thing. Um, there's other ones where, you know, um, there's an NFT where I've done a, I actually it was actually a digital drawing of a street sign with all that it was a uh, talking talking or speaking into the the colonial history here in Tauranga Moana in oh, terms yeah, of the names. Um, you know, yeah the names and stuff and the blood dripping from the the, the names so that's going to be a one of one where I'm going to do just a, a drop on that as an NFT because that was a actual NFT or oh, well digital drawing I didn't actually physically paint that when I posted it last year. Because yeah. it, it went viral, that post, and um, was really, there was a collaboration with uh, Matua Des Tata here in Tauranga Mona, who's a te whitiki o te ki, bro, he's the, the yeah. historian here, bro, he's the man. So um, it's really, you know, all that sort of stuff is really just to, um, I don't know, you know, it's putting it out there, um, putting our stories out there too sort of thing. And, you know, like even with that one, the money that I get from that, how I can use that for Kaupapa Māori, bro, here in Tauranga Moana. Nice. Yep. So it's all, it, it, yeah, bro, there, there are so many possibilities that really do excite me. You know, my I, my only concern is we need more artists to be able to, to really rise up in this space and all of us need to make a collective, strong um, stance and stand in terms of preserving the integrity of art or, or really just helping yeah, make the distinction clear. Distinction, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's more, yeah, about, you know, what we need to do collectively. Um, yeah, it's not to say one is better than the other or, or this is bad not, or anything. It's Absolutely, bro. These are PFPs, this is flipping and stuff, and this yeah, is the yeah. art, you know. Absolutely, and, bro. Yeah, he motu hake tanga tōna, he motu hake Aye. Yeah, and th- that's positioning us as well, bro. It's you know, aye. it's us making a stand where we stand within that uh co papa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just clarity, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um my only concern is it's we we don't have many artists, bro, here in Aotearoa doing it at the moment. Not and yet, bro. we're just getting swamped, you know, um just with all the other stuff, and that's why I'm, i kind of feel uh, you know, a, a concern. Um, but that's why we're doing this, bro, you know. And, to, a, and an opportunity, yeah, here's the call to action to all yeah. our, to all our artists, Aye. mates. Aye. Aye. You know, let's, let's go. Aye. Have you got any Aye. last words or has Millie got any last words? <laughs> oh, hun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she reckons, oh, we've been guest begging for two hours. <laughs> yeah, nearly. <laughs> Shucks. Really nah, nah, she, she just said she's really enjoying it, bro. Um, you know, the the NFT space and stuff. And um, yeah, I, I think it's important just to be, you know, um, realistic, you know, hopeful, op, um, you know, jump in as well. You know, the, yeah. the learning is in the doing, 
not talking yeah. about it, not humming and hiring about it. The learning is in the doing. So mahia. <laughs> yeah. Mahia te mahi. And, and you can watch oh, all yeah. these other wananga that we've had with different creators, oh. um, different buyers, different artists and stuff like that. Oh, and that's, oh. you know, that's, that's what we're trying to do so that we can all learn together, so we can all grow together. Um, yeah, and I reckon that's massive. So just really want to mihi to you, bro. Um, kuru koto koto wahine koto makau. Um, e kōkiria nei tēnei huarahi. It's, it's massive to see you guys really bringing that high quality art and, um, you know, your, your beautiful mahi toy and the stories um, behind it into the space. Um, yeah, and it's exciting to be able to look around and see other Māori in this space, you know, like... Um, there aren't many of us right now, but you know, I, I really want to totoko your call. Let's let's go, you know, to all of our mates. Let's let's go. Let's get into the space. Think oh. about why you're doing it. Think about how you're doing it. Build up, bro. Um, and then yeah, let's let's step in and, and we are here to help. <laughs> you know, like oh. that's the point of sharing these kōrero. It's it's to yeah. help to hopefully you know share some inspiration or share some lessons or you know. Um, Richie's videos are awesome for how to. Um, the videos that Riapo is doing, um, and the Eager Beavers, even showing you how to get a meta mask and how to buy Ethereum to put on your meta mask. I know, um, Te Honui Tuna is doing it with his graph grams as well, putting out these heaps of educational content, and we don't have to look overseas for it anymore. We can still find it overseas, man. Gary V is, is, is one of my tohunga that I really look up to and learn from, but um, I just encourage us to. To look here as well, you know, my, oh, my dad's got a got a saying. He he says, "Fish close to your feet first. Geez. So you know, when we're standing on the rocks, we always have the have the feeling that we want to cast it out as far as we can. But Eric can mm. flip fish closest to your feet first, because that's where the big kingy, the big wadihinga is just swimming yeah. right next to the rock. You know, so um, sure. you know, hopefully, hopefully, right. there's some value in these quarter um. For, for all of you fellas at home, um, really want to mihi to you all for taking the time um, to sure. tune in and, and kia koe te tuakana ku mihi nui kia koe e kōkiri nei ana i, i tēnei kaupapa uh, e, e hora nei o toi ki te ao, bro. Tēnā koe. Yeah, tēnā koe, tēnā tātou. Kia ora, everybody. <laughs>